Hello, very good morning to all of you. you. I hope you all are very happy, healthy and fine at home. So what did we discuss last time? I think uh, yesterday we have completed the first, uh, among the first section, there is a half part that is a protection and the deprotection right so that part we already covered uh, according to our syllabus uh, the syllabus which is introduced by savitri by phule pune university uh, university from june 2020 so in a 2020 we are so let us revise some quickly point what we are going to discuss today and let us see here the this is again as a uh, as we know that uh, msc second year organic chemistry that is a chiron approach you focus on the chiron approach for chi you know first section to uh, the first section again divided into sub two categories first one is a protection and the deprotection and later on is a chiron approach protection and deep protection for 12 lectures and chiron approach also equal weightage that is also for 12 lecture inner university allotted the number of lecture required to complete that course means this is a uh, optional subject right you know that the name of that new uh, subject code is a CBOP3. You, you are already familiar with this word. CBOP3 means choice based optional paper 3. We have a choice. We already uh, selected the first one. What is that first one is a protection deprotection chiron approach and the carbohydrate this course we have selected as optional and uh, this course is selected by our college that is a uh, shgm college koparga so i already mentioned this thing in uh, in my previous in the first lecture where I have written the details points of protection and deprotection and later point I, I, I already mentioned there I will uh, tell you the details point of the remaining section because the blackboards is uh, limited so all the content is not uh, accommodated by that blackboard and that's why now here i am focusing specifically on this what is that the section first uh, deals with protection deprotection and the chiron approach 12 lecture for protection and deprotection 12 lecture for chiron approach and look at the section second carbohydrate it is a second section that is a separate section required 24 lecture to complete that carbohydrates and a 24 total are 24 lecture for each courses and uh, 60 means there are the six tutorial you are going to get in a year so in this semester we have this one so specifically today i am going to discuss only the chiron approach it requires as a 12 lecture so what are the point we are going to discuss in that chiron approach what does it mean and what are the uh, sub point we are going to discuss here so as far as the uh, what we can call it as your uh, competitive exam is concerned so it is uh, one of the what we can call it or for research point of view to nurture the research attitude among the student and that's why introducing a uh, university introducing this kind of the subject or this kind of the uh, uh, subject at a msc second level so chiron approach you must 
यू शुड गेट फैमिलियर विद दीज वर्ड्स बिकॉज बिफोर दैट बिफोर दीज यू नेवर हर्ड सच टाइप ऑफ द वर्ड्स बट दिस कायरन अप्रोच और कायरन वर्ड इज अ हाईली यूजफुल एज पर एज अ रिसर्च पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू इज कंसर्न और फॉर युअर हायर स्टडी यू मस्ट फैमिलियर विथ दिस वर्ड एंड दैट्स वाय वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न पॉइंट टू पॉइंट वॉट वॉट डज इट मीन फर्स्ट वन इज अ इंट्रोडक्शन वॉट वॉट आर द टर्मिनोलॉजी what are the important term we are going to discuss here what is actually kairan approach means what where it is applicable why we should study at this what is the uh, purpose of uh, studying this kairan approach at this level what are the application of it and how where it is used in organic chemistry and all these uh, questions answer we are going to get during the study of this particular course that is in a introductory part we are going to learn that one then uh, second point b point the concept of chiral templates and the chirons where where in the carbon skeleton is the chiral precursor what are those chiral means what precursor chiral precursor means what are the chiral templates means what template or chiron means actually what is that term chirons and the chiral templates what are those terms what and how they are utilized in the organic chemistry how they are utilizing and how they get benefit to particular the organic chemistry when we are synthesizing as a natural product and from where the nature uh, we are going to uh, use such type of the concept while doing actual synthesis in the laboratory that are the term we are going to learn in detail in that point the concept a every and each concept we are going to learn in a with the more clarity with the suitable example chiral template chiral wherein the carbon skeleton what type of the carbon skeletons are there chiral precursor means what why we use so that type of the thing we are going to uh, learn in the uh, uh, point number 2 then let us look at as a point number 3 is a very very important again the utilization of basic concept in the synthesis of whatever we are going to study here in the introductory part or the concept of that chiral template chiral and the chiral precursor that we are actually going to apply uh, in the synthesis of as we know that organic synthesis and whatever the uh, compounds are written here there are six compounds are there they are the natural product means they uh, they already present in the nature and to synthesize in the laboratory how we are going to synthesize this comp uh, uh, how we we can synthesize what is the need to synthesize this compound because in the nature the availability of that is uh, less so in the laboratory we can prepare uh, in a large quantity of this compound because they are they act as a drug or they act as a medicine and therefore the need to uh, Uh, to synthesize so man or what we can call it as organic chemist or uh, what we uh, can uh, call it as a they uh, we can extract this type of the compound from the uh, plant as well as from the nature and as well as the modern study a uh, modern research application can be uh, synthesize this compound in the laboratory how we can synthesize what type of the strategies how the process are designed to synthesize this compound in a large scale that we are going to what type of the precursor we are going to use here specifically in a uh, there are a various classes of the organic compound in a particularly those are uh, present in the nature can you use those 
precursor for the synthesis of that target molecule what kind of the strategies we are going to apply here or uh, so that type of the thing we are going to learn while studying the utilization of basic concept in synthesis of yes propene diol then r yes you might be familiar with this word yes r yes these are the relative configuration and they are playing very important role in the organic chemistry suppose r is a uh, same everything is the same enantiomer e it is a uh, useful for the uh, act as a drug another one is uh, may not be useful it is uh, useless so that that type of the and that's why stereochemistry are playing very very important role vital role in the uh, 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 man uh, mankind or in a uh, medicine so that type of the how, how many uh, compound we are going to uh, synthesize first one we are going to approach uh, retro synthetic approach are the retro synthetic you might have learned uh, uh, in your previous classes like as a tybsc chemistry retro synthetic what are the important term used in the retro synthetic analysis what does it mean or uh, like as a synthon synthetic equivalent reagent functional group interconnection disconnection uh, synthons synthetic equivalent that type of the terminology and that retro synthesis is there and that uh, how that chiron approach is a better over the retro synthetic analysis that also we are going to learn here what will be the difference between the retro synthetic of that compound general retro synthetic approach disconnection approach and in a particularly here we are going to use a specific approach whatever things are hidden which are naturally abundant so that type of the thing we are going to learn here and how to minimize that uh, uh, pollution or what we can call it. we have to adapt or we have to design the process you know such a way that the green technology everything we are going to learn uh, somewhat in this topics so there are six natural uh, products are there and they these product we are going to learn step by step first one is a uh, yes propene diol then r yes epichlorohydrin then n plus alanine and as we know that here is a plus plus and the minus somewhere is a minus here minus and this plus they are the uh, rotation dextro rotatory are the leo rated they are the experimental quantity and then this l l indicate as a relative configuration capital d and capital l uh, generally as amino acids are there they are generally present in a l configuration and they have a configuration like as a r and uh, yes configuration or uh, all uh, 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 carbohydrates are there carbohydrate and that carbohydrate normally as a d glucose d manose like this they are naturally occurring uh, that carbohydrates are present in d configuration and that is related to that oh oh if present on the uh, right hand side then and then we can call it as a d configuration if uh, oh is present on left hand side we can call it as a l configuration so that are the relative configuration but r and s are the absolute configuration and this plus and minus is not related to d and your d may have plus as well as uh, l uh, l small l i am talking about or uh, plus and minus they are the experimental quantity means for to obtain or to check the whether the given compound is optically active or optically inactive there is one instrument or instrument used to uh, measure the optical activity of any organic compound the name of that instrument is a polarimeter that we know that so uh, l alanine then minus multistratin then minus pentinomycin minus sikimic acid these are the six compound 
we are going to learn with their retro synthetic analysis specifically we are going to apply only one thing the hidden thing or uh, completely hidden or partially hidden or we are going to arrive uh, the compound which the uh, arriving the compound at a starting material that a starting material should be uh, readily available in a market or what we can call it as in the nature so that we can synthesize that uh, that compound very uh, economically so that is the uh, main objective of this retro synthetic analysis so what are the references we are going to use while studying this chiron approach look at here there are i am uh, uh, reference to five and six specifically mentioned in uh, our uh, syllabus you can see there which is available on the website of uh, our university because our union that uh, savitri bhai phule pune university syllabus of uh, uh, msc second year and uh, then you will get everything is there so no need but specifically i am focusing here what are the references are given there there are the four references to five six and seven numbers which is actually is there in that syllabus so i am uh, putting over here one is organic chemistry and everybody knows that this is a very good book uh, which is a uh, and the language is a very simple and the lucid language so that you can understood very easily so that uh, the writer of this book the author of this book are uh, j cladon n grews four authors are there then s warren and uh, p authors uh, this is a oxford press uh, this book is uh, there uh, is a very good book so you can refer while studying this topic then second one it is a very very important one as far as this chiron approach is concerned everything you will get in this book chiron approach in organic synthesis which is written by stefan hanesian it is a very beautiful book and is written very awesome or what we can call it as very nicely written that book so you will get uh, every doubt in that uh, uh, you can clear by using by referring this the reference number fifth one chiron approach in organic syn uh, synthesis that is a uh, Stephen Hanesier, so that is the name of that author, and sometimes you can refer as organic chemistry. Again, this is a very good book. Again, R. P. Morrison and R. N. Boyd. That is a well-known organic book. From that you can uh, uh, get some uh, doubt clear by referring those reference book. And then last one is organic chemistry. It is also as a very good book. Uh, that is il finar volume specifically mentioning as a volume second that volume you have to refer for this particular uh, topic so this is all about the general introduction of that syllabus this is for four credit as we know that uh, so two credit for section first and two credit for section second one credit we already completed as a syllabus that is protection and deprotection now uh, we are arriving at the chiron approach it is also for one credit so that one credit so require as a 12 lecture so let us begin with the first point that is a introduction of this uh, chiron approach right we are talking about the chiron approach and let us see what are this uh, what are the point to learn in the introductory part of this so let us see here introduction chiron approach chiron approach and this chiron approach why it is a important one so in practice of <coughs> in practice of organic synthesis particularly as it is related to natural product whatever natural products are there so because in this chiron approach we are going to concern or we are going to synthesize the natural product in the laboratory actually by using those concept 
and that uh, related to natural products and continuous to flourish and expand in a relentless manner a uh, new challenges of new challenges of conquering increasingly complex synthetic uh, synthetic targets seem to push to limitless uh, uh, horizon of achievement even further even further a cursory a cursory look because uh, before the ancient the organic chemist thinks that there is a cursory look upon this organic compound we cannot synthesize the natural molecule or a natural products in a, actually in a laboratory but that nowadays in a modern uh, technology we can we can overcome these and so we can synthesize that natural products in the laboratory and therefore why the modern synthetic organic chemistry has been has been referred to as arts referred to as arts arts and architecture Ar archi architecture architectures why that modern organic chemistry is termed or are referred as arts and architectures because uh, because architecture matching the skill and create you uh, create you beat you beauty traditionally associated with the activities to a conceptual some organic uh, sense of organic synthesis particularly in the field of particularly in the field of natural product is a very much uh, terms of arts and the synthetic chemistry can indeed have the attribute of an artist and artist and a molecular architecture as well as being a logician strategic uh, logician strategist and a creative explorer uh, the combination of these traits put in the content of uh, microcosmic has uh, produced our present day uh, masterpiece in organic synthesis the synthetic organic chemistry has marvelous excellent and uh, <coughs> and natural tools in producing the most awesome array away some array or what we can call it as a per arrange in a very nice manner how that uh, molecular structure with uh, such efficiency and stereochemical precision stereochemistry as you know that stereochemical precision in a time span that defies human reference terms on the other hand let us see on the other hand if there is an area where the chemist can boost or quantitatively coming close to a natural biosynthetic process it is in the midest at a uh, modest attempt to control regiochemist to control regiochemistry and stereo uh, chemistry in a given transformation unfortunately when a given reaction is not a regio or a stereo selective as a desired the outcome cannot be uh, conceived since a return account is given criticism always with that organic chemist i already mentioned this term criticism regarding that organic we cannot synthesize before uh, we cannot synthesize this natural compound in the laboratory that is a criticism made uh, in a ancient time but that is a work up now in the modern so uh, nature however can disguise such a flu flaws by a variety of processes 
various processes designed nicely and we can achieve or we can synthesize the natural uh, product in a uh, chemistry and traditionally optically pure targets have been have been obtained by techniques of resolution at some stage in the synthetic scheme occasionally optically active starting material have also been used whenever available which has activated uh, uh, which was totally or partially the need to resolve an uh, route to the target or once there with the major advances in instrumental techniques along with the vast number of synthetic reagents and the other operational and technical uh, amenities at our disposal because there is a while carrying out the reaction there are the uh, problem for disposal of that uh, side product or what we can call it as a waste product it appear that the time is opportune to device synthesis that utilize readily available and operation uh, operationally versatile versatile optically active starting versatile optically active starting material and of the uh, some of these basic consideration associated with the type of strategy are uh, summarized here let us see here those are uh, strategies how strategies are applicable or used while synthesizing the natural product in the laboratory let us see here is a target right targets target target and here you can use as a word that is a, a chiral precursor chiral precursor precursor uh, chiral precursor is nothing but as a starting material for the synthesis of that so these are the two term target target means what that's now target means the molecule which molecule we can synthesize uh, the natural product we can synthesize in the laboratory starting from the uh, available starting material in the uh, market or which is available in the nature so that type of the things are there now here the point number one what is that target target must have a functional group interrelation functional group functional group functional group interconverse interrelation functional group interrelation this is the target here functional group interrelation means we can uh, because in the nature there are the various functional groups are present over there so functional group interrelation and here the point number one in uh, under the chiral precursor starting material what kind of the starting material we can use functional group present over there functional group present functional group functional group present functional group present what kind of the functional groups are present over there and as we know that functional group are the site of the reaction or as i already told you that uh, uh, whenever uh, whenever the organic molecule undergoes change or the undergoes as a reaction the part of the molecule undergoes change is known as a functional group or it is no simply known as a site of reaction whole part of the organic molecule is not changing not um, uh, changing only the part only that particular region is changing and that's why it is called as a functional group or in other word uh, precisely the atom or group of atom that determine the physical properties as well as chemical property of a particular family of the organic compound is known as functional group so that is the first point now look at as a point number second which is a carbon framework here is a carbon framework because as we know that in the organic com uh, com uh, chemistry the carbon is a main constituent present over there carbon uh, carbon framework carbon 
framework are carbon skeleton carbon framework that is patterned and set what type of the pattern they are having patterned and uh, shapes pattern and shapes what type of the pattern and shape they are having carbon skeleton on that basis uh, at tybs level you might be familiar with that uh, word or you know what we can call it as what type of the building blocks are used there for synthesizing that natural product i think terpenoid and the terpene at that time we have learned that one something so here is a next one is a second point will be that uh, what is that uh, flexibility of carbon framework here is a flexibility flexi b flexibility of carbon framework flexibility of carbon carbon framework framework flexibility of carbon framework is because that is a chiral precursor starting from the, uh, the, uh, the precursor chiral precursor nothing but as a optically active starting material and that's why uh, we uh, there should have a flexibility if it is a fixed one you cannot uh, synthesize the target molecule and that's why flexibility of the carbon framework but here it is a fixed pattern and the shapes is there so that's why it is in the target this one now the uh, uh, third one and third one is a very very important as far as this is come that is called as a stereochemistry right this is a stereo stereo chemistry stereo chemistry stereo chemistry it is a branch of chemistry that deals with the study of uh, organic compound uh, the uh, rearrangement or the arrangement of the atom in a space uh, is known as a stereo chemistry and here is a third point that is a stereo chemical versatility stereo chemical versatility stereo chemical stereo chemical versatility versatility so that is a stereo chemical versatility is present over there in the starting material or in a chiral precursor and then fourth one is a topology fourth one is a topology fourth one is a topology uh, topology where the particular topology in a fixed uh, uh, definite topology is there and then and then we can uh, prepare accordingly that chiral precursor that is availability and the cost here is availability 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 and the cost availability and the cost if availability if that is not available readily is not available then how we can uh, consider as a chiral precursor and if suppose it is available but it is very costly just like as a gold it is very costly so we cannot prepare that even though so that type of the if it is uh, readily available and cost is uh, uh, economically profitable then and then these are uh, these starting material we can use for the synthesis of that target molecule and these are the terminologies we are using in a chiron approach this is the somewhat about that introductory parts now the purpose of this monograph as we know that monograph purpose of this monograph monograph purpose of this monograph means the study is included at at a particular uh, means uh, in a same uh, way in a similar manner and that's why that type of the thing is called as a monograph the purpose of this monograph is to illustrate and discuss how carbohydrate and as we know that how carbohydrate can be utilized as a starting material you know in the synthesis of natural product of varied structure complexity and organic compounds containing uh, predisposed uh, centers of asymmetry while it must be appreciated appreciated that uh, no single class of organic compound including carbohydrate and as we know that carbohydrates 
are naturally present as we know that sugar is a carbohydrate and that why it is readily available and starting from that we can synthesize the natural product so you have to arrive you have to bring that uh, compound at a this that is a synthon or the precursor and from that we can easily synthesize our target molecule because that uh, sugar or um, uh, that uh, glucose are readily available and will become general all purpose building blocks in organic synthesis and we hope to demonstrate uh, that this little uh, appreciate, appreciated class of naturally occurring organic molecule can at a times come surprisingly close and within the past few years several reuse uh, have appeared dealing with the several subject of using chiral chiral starting materials in organic synthesis the use of readily available optically active uh, hydroxy acids such as plus or minus tartaric acid along others have been duly illustrated as well as possibility of microbiological and enzymatically transformations leading to optically active synthetically useful building blocks such as uh, amino acids hydroxy acids uh, uh, terpenes etc the use of carbohydrate and chiral building blocks has also been reviewed in general and account of research activities representing progress in our laboratory uh, recent short reviews on synthesis with chiral precursor cover the general area by classification according to the type of starting material and there also exist monographs and reviews on asymmetric synthesis in which the formation of enantiomerically enriched uh, products in reaction involving compounds containing sp2 carbon atoms using a chiral reagent or in a chiral environment is uh, discussed and superbly documented reviews discussing recent strategies in stereo control in acyclic uh, systems and aldol methodology aldol methodologies are available and in uh, preparing this article uh, effort can made to bring a large collection of contribution in an area under under uh, under long standing involvement in related research activities the tendency to use a personal uh, personalized approach could not be avoided and it is the intention therefore to discuss the several strategies of organic synthesis with the carbohydrates based on elements of design discovery and execution of brief review of concept of this is a introductory part where we can use as a carbohydrate amino acid hydroxyl acids and the uh, uh, strategy can be uh, it is evident that the strategy can be extended to other chiral starting material such as amino acids hydroxy uh, acids and the terpenes in uh, coming uh, new modern synthesis i think this is the introductory part of that chiron approach i think uh, in the next lecture we will start as a second b part so where we can going to learn actually what is that chiron uh, template and the chiron precursors i think with this let us stop today here have a nice day thank you